Okay, so in today's tutorial, I'm gonna be walking you through two animations I did there in the 80s style render, but I already made an 80s style tutorial already. So I'm gonna be actually be walking you through the theory and the design aspects that go into the 80s style art. And we're gonna be walking through how to make this, these stars, everything done in Blender. And we're also gonna be util utilizing a really cool DeLorean model. So I'll show you where to get that and how to implement it. So let's get into it. So when it comes to this 80s style art, they're all very, very similar. It's that, that neon teal and that purple and that blue. And a lot of cities are used, of course, just like the last tutorial. It's these, these hills and mountains and the sun, of course, pink, yellow, blue, purple, a lot of shiny stuff, a lot of glare. So we're going to be using the EV engine for that. It's perfect. A lot of metallic materials. And of course, the wireframe monitor the wireframe modifier is very, very heavily used with this 80s style stuff, and it's pretty easy to make. So let's go in and show you how to make that stuff. So first we're gonna be tackling the different design aspects that went into this render. So I'm gonna try to make the stars and the sun. Now I'm not gonna be showing you how to make these animations loop. You can go back to the other loop animation tutorials that I've done and it shows you it's very simple, it just goes, it's very simple camera movement. I'm gonna be showing you how I did those design those design pieces so you can implement it into your own creative workflow. So first, let's make that sun. So let's go over to mesh. We're gonna add a we're gonna add a circle right here on fill type, give it in gone, and now we have this. So we're gonna scale it up. I'm gonna hit RX90. And now we have our circle. So let's go ahead and solidify it. So give it some thickness right about there. And let's add those cuts. So how do we do that? We'll go to Shift A, and we're gonna add a cube. And I'm gonna go right here to the scale, and we're gonna scale it down like this, and we're gonna scale it out. And so this is the cut. We're gonna bring it up. Of course, you can make it thicker or thinner, depending on what you want it to look like. Now we're gonna add an array modifier. So we're gonna take that right here on the middle one, I believe. Nope, here on the bottom one, this is how thick the lines are gonna be. And bring the count all the way down to that. Now, click on the circle and add a Boolean modifier. Now right here on object, click cube. Now hit the cube and delete it from view and now you have this sun. Now, how do we color it? All these suns have a gradient going on with them. So let's go over here to look dev mode and let's add that gradient. Let's go over here to the shading tab here in Blender 2.8 and let's click new. Now let's, now let's add a color ramp so we can add the color to the gradient. We're gonna make a gradient texture, plug the color into the color ramp here, plug the color ramp here. So now we have this. So the two colors we're gonna be using is red and yellow. So here on the black one, let's make it red and let's make this one yellow. Go over here to yellow, perfect. So now we have, so now we have this gradient, but it's not really working the way we want. And we can switch to quadratic, just the different gradient movements, but it, it only decides that. So we need to add a texture coordinate and we need to add a mapping node right here. Now plug the vector into the vector here of the gradient texture and plug the object into the vector. So now the gradient moves, but now we can use these settings here to move around that gradient. So let's take it here and let's rotate it here on the Z just like that. And let's scale it down and take the location just like that. And we can take the scale and play around with it just like that. So now we have a gradient and you can also make it emissive or anything like that. But sometimes you don't want it to be smooth. You want it to be a hard gradient. So what you can do is take right here on linear, change it to constant. And now you have this. So now it's not gradient. Now it doesn't have that orange like the original gradient had. So click the plus icon and we're gonna go over here to orange. And now we have this nice gradient going on. Now for this back here, it's a plane with a particle system, again, with another gradient on it. So it goes from blue to pink. And we added those spheres, gave them an emission shader, and just added it as a particle system. And we made those stars. I'll walk you through that really quickly. So I'll walk you through that pretty quickly. We're just gonna add a plane, and we're gonna go here and get our icosphere. 
and we're going to subdivide it just to make it smooth, just like that. Bring it over here, and let's take our plane and also subdivide it by 100. So let's add a particle system just like that. Give it the hair. Go over here to render on path, switch to object, and on instance object, click that icosphere. And now we have now we have all our stars. Looks pretty bad. So let's go over here on render, scale randomness, and bring our scale down just like that. And now we have the stars. Let's just give this icosphere an emission shader. And we'll go over here, make it emissive, give it a strength of probably 10. Go back to rendered view. Now we have all our little stars. And basically I added that in the background as well as we use the same procedure for the sun, made a gradient so it looks like the, make it look like more of a sunset vibe. And we have our stars. Now I'm gonna go ahead and walk you through this whole animation and we're gonna make it this time. So let's do it. All right, so first off, I'm gonna quickly do that quick procedure I do to make sure that it stays looping. You can go back to the old tutorials or you can just quickly watch what I'm doing here and see that. So we're gonna change it to wire here. Now let's go ahead and add a cube. I'm gonna hit S to scale it up by two. And I'm gonna take our two faces here and I'm gonna hold down control so it snaps to the grid. Go all the way to the edge of our box here and all the way to the edge of our box here. And I'm gonna delete these two faces. All right, now we have a standard box. I'm gonna bring them all the way to the edge here so our car can just play, play on that. I'm gonna to go to the transform. I'm gonna go to the transform on the scale on the X, bring it out right about there. And I'm gonna bevel these edges. So I'm gonna hit tab, hit A to select everything. And here on bevel, just gonna bevel it right about there. So now we have this. So in the design, we had all this sparkling stuff. We have a lot of different things and it's all pretty much almost, pretty much all of it's done fairly procedurally. So let's do this wall here. So we're gonna select the two sides of the wall by holding shift. We're gonna subdivide it quite a bit, maybe right about there. And then we're gonna, we're gonna touch the fractal bar right here on quad corner type. And that is gonna do that. I'm gonna do 15 subdivisions and right about there. So now we have this bumpy area. How, would I, how did I add the different emission on the different vertices? So we're gonna go over here to the node editor and the shading tab, and we're gonna make that. We're gonna be using Eevee for this. So I'm just gonna to go to look dev mode here and I'm gonna add a new material. I'm gonna add a new material to this make it metallic, and this is gonna be the base material. We need to add another material. Click new, make that the same thing. I'm gonna hit tab so that everything's selected, and I'm gonna click assign, assigning this material to everything selected here. So, making sure that this material is selected, I'm gonna add a mixed shader right here. Click that, I'm gonna add an emission shader. Bring it down here and plug it into the second shader slot. So now it's overtaking that but we need to tell it to do that random. Now we need to tell it to do that random vertice thing. So we're gonna add shift A and add a color ramp right here. Bring the color down on the factor and let's add a noise texture just like that. Plug that in and then we need to add a, a mapping node and we need to add a geometry node type in geometry and plug the true normal into the vector. So once we do that and we take our color ramp, you can see it start to work. I'm gonna add strength of 10 to this. Now it's really overtaking it. We can take our color ramp and slide them in and now it's working the way we want it to. So I'm gonna go down here and make it purple just like that. And so if you want these to dance around just like they are in the animation, what I did on the rotation, I just animated it on the rotation and I looped it just like that. We're gonna go and actually loop this later, but that's how I did the animation on those little triangles. And you can make it more or less with this color ramp. Really, really fun procedure you can add. All right, now let's add this really kind of cool piano keyboard looking floor. So that's done with a brick texture basically. So we're gonna go up here so hit tab and we're going to select the floor here. Go over to the materials, add a new material, click assign, assigning that new material to the floor. And then I'm going to make it metallic, go back to the shading and 
making sure that that material is selected, we're going to go and add, do the same thing, mix text. We're going to get a mix shader, just like that, an emission shader. Bring it right down here. I'm going to give it a strength of 10, and we're going to make it dark blue, just like that. And we're going to add a color ramp right over here. And we're going to add a brick texture. And just like that, we have it. And we can bring the color ramp down just like that. And now we can it kind of dances around with the color ramp in that cool fashion. So I'm going to take the base color here on the principle, make it pretty dark, and then the scale. You can just play around with this however you want. I'm going to make it about that size. And you can just make it dance around until you like how many are in your composition here, right about that. So now we have this really cool thing. It's all kind of washed out in terms of the color and the glare. So we can go over here to the world settings, make sure the color is on black. And then on the bloom, you can decrease the bloom amount right here if it's not already on. So bring down the bloom and now we have some pretty cool color going on. Now for these sides, now for these sides, I just took the sides, extruded them out, and then did the same thing where I applied a material as well as the top, took two of the vertices, extruded them down, and then added material to that. Same thing, very, very simple in that design. Now let's go ahead and add in that DeLorean model. So we're going to go over here to blend swap, blendswap.com. It's a cool website full of tons of blend models. So we're just going to type in DeLorean and click search. And then click on this DeLorean model here made by Chris Kuhn. It's free. You download it. It's 11 megabytes. And we can use it. So let's go ahead and import that into our project. So you would go up to File, Append, and you would go and find where you placed the file. So right here it's called DeLorean Blend Swap. Go here to Object, and then click that. Hit A to select everything, and Append from Library. And there it is. Okay, so once it imports into the scene, you'll select this box here, which parented, which everything is parented to, and just rotate him however it works in your scene. So I'm going to rotate him like this, which looks like 90 degrees, and we'll place him in just like that, kind of bring him here to the end of our animation. And so now he is in the scene. I'm going to just get a, I'm just going to get a light here at the back just to make sure that we can actually see him. So once we hit, let's go back to rendered. And now we can kind of have a light placed behind the guy so that you can actually see the DeLorean and it's not blown out. Let's make it slightly blue. And now we have that. Now let's go ahead and loop this animation. So first thing we need to do is add a camera. So hold down control and bring it all the way here to the back of our box here. And let's point him the direction we need him to go. So that'll be 90 degrees there, zero there and zero here and negative 180 so it's pointing that way and now let's animate it so so here on the end I'm gonna get 120 here I'm gonna make it 80 frames long and then we're gonna take the camera right here on the 8 click that go here to the end skip a frame on the right arrow and type in negative 8 and that'll take it here to the end of our tube and then click that so now we are inside of our box. Now let's take this guy, bring him here to the front, just like that. And I'm going to move it around a little bit. But first thing we need to do, all right, now to make this loop, we need to instance this box. So hit M for a new collection, click new collection and call it tube or whatever you want to call it. Now hit shift A, collection instance tube. And we'll just bring it to the end, holding down control so it snaps right there to the end, and we'll just duplicate this tube however long you want it to be duplicated. Now again, I'm rushing through this pretty fast. That's because I've done this quite a few times on the channel. You can go back to the other looping tutorials and see how I did this, but I'm hoping most of you understand what I'm doing right now. All right, so if we hit rendered here, we can watch it play through the animation just like that, and it does loop, but we need to parent the car to the camera. So take the DeLorean master right there, Hold down shift, click the camera, control P. 
object, which parents that master to the object, and now the car is following it. But now we need that light, this point light here, to follow the camera as well. So hold on, hold down shift, clam camera, parent the light to it, and I'm gonna make that light a little bit brighter. All right, so now everything is parented and everything is looping just the way we want it to. So like I said, the way you animate the walls, you can quickly go, go ahead and do that, but I'm not gonna go into that too much because I've talked about that a lot on the channel. And you can render that by going over here, saving it, switch to FFmpeg video, encoding, change it to MP4, and then you render, render animation. Now I know I didn't go through this tutorial like I normally do, just as a very step-by-step -step walkthrough because I want you guys to be really creative and I don't wanna just have this to be another repeat tutorial because I've done a lot of that. So you can go ahead and use these procedures and colors that I've showed you and be really creative and have some fun and make some really cool 80s style art. So there you go. Thank you guys for watching and hope you enjoyed.